Hello friends, welcome to the second edition of Economic Sutra and here we will be talking about the Smart Cities program. Now this program started a few years ago and uh, many of you have asked me uh, what happened to it, what was the outcome. So here what we will do is to show you uh, how this pro project has uh, progressed and what have been uh, many of the very interesting outcomes and very diverse outcomes that have happened across the country. But first, let me explain to you the philosophy behind it and why it is quite different from earlier urban interventions that um, the central government has attempted. To understand this, you need to first think about the economic philosophy as well as the urban philosophy that we had in the post-independence period. So if you go back before independence, one of the things that you will notice is that different parts of the country had very different architecture, different urban designs and so on. Now this is obviously uh, only to be expected. After all, you know, we are a big country, diverse culturally as well as climactically. So you should expect very different urban outcomes. And yet, if you look at cities built after independence, you will see that there is a great deal of uniformity. Basically the same RCC blocks that you see in Coimbatore are the same as the ones in Jodhpur, are the same that you see in Guwahati or Jorhat. Now, why is it that we ended up with this conformity? The reason for this was derived from the same top-down socialist planning that was there in the economic planning, the five-year plans. That same philosophy turns up in urban thinking in terms of the Corbusierian modernist movement, which basically tried to create a idealized uh, set of uh, rules or building codes that were then spread across the country. So basically what you had is a top-down idea of what an ideal city was and consequently we were expected then to have a replication of that model across the country. So you ended up with the same building codes, the same box-like RCC constructions, the same kind of neighborhoods or layouts or colonies depending on which part of the country you live but basically they all look the same. Now, as time passed, <clears throat> this sort of approach has slowly begun to evolve. You've seen a breakdown of this. Yet, a lot of this thinking has continued to be embedded in many other urban interventions. For example, the urban interventions like the Jawaharlal Nehru Urban Renewal Mission. Again, largely top-driven by the then Planning Commission with the idea that essentially there were certain ideal interventions that every Indian city needed and that they could then be pushed down from the top to the bottom. The Smart Cities mission take this idea and turns it on its head. The thinking here, and as you may have seen in the very first episode of the series, was that there is no ideal optimal equilibrium or ideal structure. What you really have are customized contextual um, solutions to all problems, but in this case, urban problems. So, what we did is a completely different thing. We went out to different parts of the country, to different cities, and asked the citizens and the urban managers, what is it that you want? And in 2016, we launched this in a big way, in various kind of con contests were uh, put forward, and as a result of that, we managed to get lots of ideas from different parts of the country and some of those cities were then selected for the smart cities mission and then they were given resources to go out there and do these projects. Now over the course of the last three years consequently uh, many of these projects have now finally been completed. So what are we going to do in this episode? Well we're going to go and look at some of these uh, projects, look at what was there before and what has come out of it afterwards. So here are some of the smart city projects we selected for the show. So here is an example of a great smart city intervention. It's in the city of Indore. There were of course many smart city interventions in Indore, including cleaning it up, which many people you, uh, may have heard about. But this particular intervention relates to street food. Indore is of course justly very famous for its street food. But what was done here was to take a street called Chappan and convert it into a um, pedestrianized area with lots of street food stalls opening up, seating and so on. 
And what has happened as a result of this, a public space has been created literally out of thin air and very, very popular, and it has literally transformed the nightlife of this city. So let's go and have a look at it. With its historical origins going back centuries in time, Indore took up the challenge to stand with the most modern cities of our times. Indore has been a forerunner among the smart cities before becoming the top-ranked city for the year 2020. The city is implementing 277 projects worth 7,500 crore rupees under the Smart Cities mission. 4,711 crore rupees is dedicated to projects within the area-based development or ABD radius. The city worked on improving its identity by reviving old heritage structures. Its people welcomed the effort to improve waste management and develop public and commercial places. Backed by this strong local support for smart city projects, Indore made visible gains in a time-bound manner. The concept of smart city is to provide a decent standard of living to people using smart solutions. These smart, uh, smart solutions basically give a boost to the services in all the major areas of development like economic, physical, infrastructure and institutional. Apart from the contribution of union and state governments, the Indore Smart City Development Limited or ISCDL has been raising funds for its projects mainly from private parties. The result was to make Indore the cleanest city for the fourth year in a row in 2020. Besides rebuilding for better and healthier living, Indore also has a vibrant street food culture. Its Mumbai city's chopati-like markets, such as the Sarafa Bazaar and Chappan Dukan, have been revived through decongestion and pedestrianization. ISCDL brought order to this iconic commercial street while keeping its liveliness intact. Chappan Dukan is literally 56 shops on a 175-meter road stretch. Over time, the place became congested and chaotic with traffic movement, haphazard parking and encroachments. But redevelopment, undertaken over a short period, resulted in a sea change. The 56 shops now have upgraded facades, reflecting a consistent theme. The entire area has been made a vehicle-free zone with thematic seating places. यूं तो हम इंदौरीज़ हैं, हम चटोरे इंदौरी कहलाते हैं और स्वाद को हमेशा प्रिफर करते हैं। लेकिन सेकंड थिंग अगर आप बात की जाए, तो यहाँ का जो सीटिंग अरेंजमेंट है पब्लिक के लिए वो बहुत अच्छा। थोड़ा सा डेंस जो वैसा लगता था, लेकिन अब धीरे-धीरे थोड़ा वाइड हुआ है, ओपन हुआ है व्यापार उतना नहीं था जितना अभी चलता है। खासियत इस प्लेस की ये है कि यहाँ जो भी चीजें मिलती हैं बहुत ही सस्ती और रिजनेबल रेटिंग में मिलती हैं। The results speak for themselves. Indore is a city that does things much better. The point about smart city interventions, as you have gathered, is really a bottom-up idea. So. You have very different interventions happening in different cities. So the last one that you just saw related to street food. But here is another one. This is in Surat. It's an old fort in Surat that has been revived. Now this fort uh, was built by the Gujarat Sultanate uh, somewhere in the 1540s uh, as protection for this port against Portuguese marauders. Then this uh, port uh, and the fort as well moved into the hands of the Mughals and finally into the hands of the East India Company. After independence, this um, fort area basically was run uh, as a series of government offices. But what has been done under the Smart Cities project is to clear out these government offices and to revive this fort as a um, tourist site, as a heritage site. And as you will see, 
it has really created a new public space for the city as well as a museum. A city with a history that dates back to 300 BC. Today, it's the economic capital of Gujarat. Yes, we are talking about Surat, a place of great prosperity all through the ages. All through its glorious past, the city has harboured ships from as many as 84 countries. Down the ages, it has seen many rulers and governments transform the city. This is a river Tapi and it connects to the Arabian Sea. So all the ships which were coming to Surat, they were parked in Arabian Sea and all the material well shifted through river Tapi to Surat castle. The, all that movement of the goods were controlled from here. Under the smart city mission, Surat city administration and city residents have brought in a paradigm shift. The work on the Surat fort in Chalk area is one of its most distinctive projects. When Surat castle, uh, the conservation work started, this is the frame which where you can understand how big trees were here. All those kind of roots have been cleaned from here up to the last tip of their roots and then slowly we have opened the castle, understood the construction system with lime and those kind of different sizes of the bricks were there. So all that has been fabricated and then restored. So here you can see the picture after restoration and this is before restoration. It shows us and it gives us a clue that this is not a one phase of construction. It has been built over a period of times and there are six layers of construction. So this what you can see is the last uh, major construction done by the Gujarat Sultanate. So this is a Gujarat Sultanate layer. But on this side the sizes of the bricks which you can see is quite big. The lime mortar and the quality of construction is different. This is a primitive construction done in the Firosa Tughlaq time. So, it was never a ruling fort and hence what you can see is a very strong construction. An exhibition space, royal conference hall and research library give visitors a glimpse into the rich heritage of the fort. What is this fort and what is the history about this fort? There is a lot of documentation. How the British start, started making the coins in the mints and uh, then it lasted till 1947. So uh, there is a lot to learn from the castle. When we came to know that even the historic projects also can be part of the smart city mission, and we went for the complete uh, conservation project of the not Surat castle but the whole chalk area as a precinct approved by the smart city mission and under that when this project came we could do n number of things which were limitation by SMC because of the funds. The next project is in Devangiri, which is a small town in Karnataka. This is a water conservation project. Essentially, there was a temple tank that had fallen into disuse. So what has been done is to revive the step well as a way of uh, sort of bringing back a traditional water conservation system, but also a public space that can now be used for multiple uses. Davangere was among the first cities chosen for the Smart Cities mission. This centrally located city in Karnataka has many projects divided into area-based development and pan-city units. Mula Davangere ya onda the circle eni to a onda circle ge esur barli karna gironta ondo honda thumba puratana vadanta honda ali sakastu jana adanna indi na dinagalli kudeni rili balasli ke mat ber bere solla bekagi balastai idro. आदरे इतनी चीना दिन कर ली, दिन कर दंते, अदों तह कोड़चे गुंडी आगे कसावना विशाखु अंता वंदो डस्ट बिन तरा आगे तो स्मार्ट सिटी या योजने या ली ये वत्तो अत्यंत अद्भुत वादन तह वंदो सुंदर वादन तह पुष्करने अल्ले निर्माण आगे दे। Located near Hondada Circle is the Kalyani Kund water tank. It has a lot of cultural significance for the Durga Ambika Temple. Devotees believe its water was sacred. 
but post 1991 the tank became defunct for lack of maintenance there were several attempts to restore this heritage structure navi onda sarkalle illi 45 varshindano idivi illi baala galija agittu valli onda ittu adralli neer baala shuddha agittu sarvajanika use maartta idra neer adna ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಸಿಟಿಯಿಂದ ಇದಾಗಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಪುಷ್ಕರಣೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ದಾವಣಗೆರೆ ಭಾಳ ಸುಂದರ ಕಾಣುತ್ತಿದೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ನಾವು ಭಾಳ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ವಯಸ್ಸಿದ್ದ ನೋಡೋದಕ್ಕೂ ಈಗ ನೋಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಭಾಳ ವ್ಯತ್ಯಾಸ ಇದೆ ಅದೇನು ನಾವು ಚಿಕ್ಕ ವಯಸ್ಸಿದ್ದ ನೋಡಬೇಕಂತ ಏನು ನೋಡೋಂಗಿದ್ದಿಲ್ಲ ಹಂಗಿತ್ತು ಈ ಪುಷ್ಕರಣೆ ಆಗಿದ್ಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಸುಂದರ ಕಾಣೋಕ್ಕೆ ನಮಗೂ ಭಾಳ ಸಂತೋಷ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇದೇ ರೀತಿ ದಾವಣಗೆರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ನಗರ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ ಮಾಡಲಿ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಮಾಡಲಿ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀವಿ The next smart city project is in Tumkuru. It's also in Karnataka. It's, uh, I believe, 60 kilometers from Bengaluru. Uh, here, there was an old slum, about three decades old or so, uh, called Mariamma Nagar. And it was, as many slums are, with very limited urban amenities. What has been done as part of this uh, smart cities project is to clear out the slum and provide the residents, about 87 odd families, with a completely modern amenities. Located close to Bengaluru, Tumkuru is a small city in Karnataka. With an investment of 1800 crore rupees under the Smart Cities mission, it is one of the seven smart cities in the state. The Tumkuru Smart City Limited emphasizes safety enabled smart transit better transportation and green infrastructure system. The central government funded Smart City Mission project has made a noticeable difference in the Mariam Nagar slum located in the heart of Tumkuru. <laughs> In particular, the Smart City Fund has proved to be a boon for 87 families here. For nearly 25 years, these families lived in unhygienic conditions in the slum without any basic infrastructure. Using Smart City Mission Funds, a housing scheme was launched for them at a cost of 14 crore rupees financed equally by the centre and the state government. The project has come up in three blocks, A, B and C, with 88 units or houses with vitrified flooring. Common spaces had granite flooring to make the houses feel luxurious and comfortable. The project also has a self-sufficient provision of a community centre, livelihood centre and also an Anganwadi centre. <laughs> Varanasi is a city that is justly famous for its temples and its ghats. In recent years, many efforts have been made to clean up these ghats. There is a specific project, as you all know, uh, called the Kashi Vishwanath Corridor. But as part of the Smart Cities project, a few of these ghats have been taken up and they are being brought back to their past glory. This is about conserving, of course, their traditional architecture, but also about creating a public space right along the uh, Ganga, where everybody from all walks of life can enjoy the river. Kashi, a city older than history, older than tradition. is poised for a modern makeover while keeping its heritage alive. The Varanasi Smart City Limited was set up on 29th October 2016 to execute the Smart City mission. The Holy City is transforming its urban landscape by providing ease of living to residents and tourists. Its urban ecosystem has the four pillars of comprehensive development, institutional, physical, social and economic infrastructure. 
One of the smart city initiatives of Varanasi is the Ghats revitalization and facade restoration work. The Ghats are the most prominent and historically significant feature of the city. The constant wearing down, unplanned additions, disorganized spaces and faulty connectivity have changed the original character of these Ghats. Facades of adjoining private properties that are integral parts of the Ghats were also in a dilapidated state. These structures need a holistic effort to restore the heritage, integrity and visual identity of the Ganga River Bank. Ghats are the lifeline of Varanasi. So while designing the smart city projects, we have taken extra care to see that the original historical characteristics of the Kasi ancient Kasi town is kept and simultaneously modern technology is used for the delight of the visiting tourists and uh, pilgrims. The redevelopment of the Ghat area work has included step cleaning, restoring hardscapes, organizing informal and formal activities, streetscape elements like street furniture, lighting and improvement of Ghat infrastructure and amenities. The project is estimated to cost 11.88 crore rupees. The Varanasi Smart City recently developed a five-storey 375 two-wheeler parking lot at Godolia Crossing, one of the most congested places of old Kashi. Prime Minister Modi inaugurated it in July this year. It has 33 shops on the ground floor. Besides parking, the main idea was to decongest the streets. In addition to raising quality of life standards, the Varanasi Smart City is aiming to rejuvenate Kashi as a sustainable global hub of culture, heritage and spirituality. Agartala is the capital of Tripura in the far northeast of India. It's a small city but a beautiful city and like many smaller cities, uh, it did not have an integrated traffic control system till very recently. But as part of the Smart Cities project, it now has a control room that not only provides for control of traffic, but also uh, provides surveillance of the roads for security and other reasons. So let's go and have a look at the brand new uh, surveillance systems and control rooms that have been introduced in Agartala. City of peace and joy. Agartala is one of the largest cities in the Northeast. It is today a pioneer in implementing smart city projects. The Agartala Smart City Limited has identified 2,800 acres for development. The city is radically transforming its infrastructure with urban design initiatives like placemaking, visual improvements of roads and junction design. An integrated command and control centre helps the city to collate information. Collaborative monitoring facilitates analysis of this data for quicker decision making. Intelligent operations capabilities facilitate integrated data visualization, real-time collaboration, CCTV for flood monitoring as well as road network management. The integrated command and control center facilitates smart city solutions including city surveillance, integrated traffic management system, traffic violation detection system, each alarm devices, etc. Agatala has also developed a five-year sustainability model that leverages its integrated smart solutions to earn revenue for the smart city. So friends, I hope you got a sense of the various projects that are being done under the Smart Cities program. Um, you've just seen a smattering of these projects, of course. Uh, there are many more that are already been done. There are many more in the pipeline. But the idea here is to get you to understand what is the philosophy and the kinds of projects that get done. But very importantly, please find out whether or not there is a Smart Cities project in your city. We would love to have your feedback, both positive and negative, because after all, feedback-based policy making is about understanding right from the bottom what is actually going on and what citizens really think about these projects. So please uh, give us some feedback, of course, social media, and many other avenues that are there on government portals and so on, so that we policymakers 
know what actually goes on on the ground. So viewers, that's all for this time. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Economic Sutra on Sunset TV.